Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray study hour, ready to get back into the Father's Word, book of Matthew again. We're going to pick up here in chapter 22, along about verse 23 here. And this is a fascinating chapter in as much as they're trying to set Christ up. They're trying to trip him up, trying to entrap him. Um, we had just finished in the last lecture with the government officials uh, that were trying to uh, trap him up, entrap him as far as paying taxes is concerned. They went away shaking their heads. Now, we'll start today with the Sadducees. The Sadducees did not believe in life after death. I mean, when you, when, when you die, that was it. And, of course, then following that, the Pharisees will try to trap, entrap him. So, we have uh, basically the government and the religious officials trying to entrap him. Interesting, what? Yet there's nothing new under the sun. Fascinating. So, we'll pick it up with a total new thought in this 22nd chapter. And the answer that he will give you is real weighty in as much as it answers many questions about what happens to us at death even inasmuch as the Sadducees did not believe in life after death. Very interesting. So, with the word of wisdom from our Father, we ask it in Yeshua's name. And chapter 22, verse 3, and it reads, The same day came to him the Sadducees. This is just right after the lawyers and the, the government officials got through hitting him. Here come the Sadducees. Same day which say there is no resurrection, and ask him, 24, saying, Master, you know, it's always so polite and really trying to build you up. Master, Moses said, if a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. And so it was, as it was written, 25. Now, there were with us seven brethren. We had seven brothers over here in one family. And the first, when he had married a wife, deceased. He died. And having no issue, no children, left his wife unto his brother. Verse 26. Likewise, the second also, he died, and the third, he died, unto the seventh. Verse 27. And last of all, the woman died also. I mean, they're, they're all gone. Um, she, she must have been some kind of gal. I'll tell you for sure that she planted seven husbands all in one family here. Of course, it's hypothetical, so don't get too nervous, but do learn from Christ's answer. That's important. They're trying to set him up, all right? In other words, they're mocking resurrection, or that is to say life after death, is this woman has a problem, all right? If that be the case, if, uh, if a man were to be again with his wife, even after in the resurrection. Verse 28. Therefore, they continue their question, therefore in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? Question. For they all had her. Which one of them? Verse 29. Listen carefully. Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Now don't read over that. Anyone, and it's why I stay on your case all the time about studying God's Word. Not that I want to create a bunch of religious uh, fanatics. But no one can help erring 
if they're not familiar with God's scriptures, if they're not familiar with the word, the scriptures as they are set, that is to say not to memorize them, but to at least have a working knowledge of God's plan, what he intends to do. How can you help him if you don't know what he's going to do? But also, the power of God that we were with him, he created our souls, he is our father, our true father, and that he has the power to place that soul, breath of life, into these flesh bodies, but he also has power to cause it to step from the flesh into a spiritual body and be with him. His power is the power of life, not death. Satan is the prince of death. God is creative and life. Everything about him is life. So um, even to the point that will ultimately come, the lake of fire is about life in as much as those that have had every opportunity to love our Father, they're going to be simply blotted out. And that is life because we won't have to put up with them anymore. There, the, you, there will be no such thing as a policeman. There will be no such thing as, um, as uh, an army other than Christ's army. We won't need one. That's our advantage in the power of God. Again, coming back to that vase, verse, none knowing the power of God, nor knowing the power of God, rather, that he's going to accomplish these things. It's going to happen. And straight from the mouth of Christ, let it be known that you can make many mistakes by not being familiar with the scripture, especially, especially in this generation where we are making preparation uh, for the second advent, and he is making preparation for the second advent. How do I know that? From the scripture. The parable of the fig tree plus many other prophecies and being a student of prophecy, seeing prophecies in this generation come to pass that only God could have the power to cause them to come to pass in the regular form and fashion in which they have. When God from his throne executes his, the action in the movements of both souls and nations. He has the power. Don't ever forget that. Okay, verse 30. What about the woman and the seven husbands? Verse 30. For, if, if you were to know the scriptures, you would know that for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of God in heaven. Why? Because they are angels. That's what a spiritual body is, is an angel. This is the uh, example of the fellow servant that appeared to John in the book of Revelation, and he fell down and worshiped him, and he said, hey, get up. Get up. I'm just a plain old boy just like you are, a fellow servant. That's what a fellow servant means. Same thing happened to Daniel. Someone in a spiritual body came up to him and he fell down and, and began to worship him. And he said, stop that. I'm just a fellow servant. I'm just like you are, only I'm in a spiritual body. So we know that woman was created on earth. That is to say the flesh woman now. But still a soul from our father, an angelic being, when God would say, let us make man in our, I repeat, underline it, our, meaning God included, in our image. What does that mean? Let us make man to look just like we are. In other words, uh, um, old John over here, we're going to, that's, that's a, not a bad looking old angel there. We're going to make John look just like John's uh, angel in the flesh. Just mold him up there and there he is, presto. And so it would be said that when you have seen Christ, you have seen the Father. God made himself in the image, our image. Again, God included. Um, you have to realize that in, um, among the, in a spiritual body, as we know marriage today is for a purpose. 
It was to replenish the earth. It was to bear a children. And there is no need out of the flesh to bear children because all are adults and children of God in the angelic form. They have a body. Angels' food was the manna that fell from the heavens and fed the, our ancestors as they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. So really, you need to simplify this and look at the simplicity in which Christ is teaching this and don't make some big ooh, spiritual thing out of it. All right? It's just that simple. All right? Angels don't marry. And I've had many people say, well, will I be with my husband in the, or will I be with my wife? The answer, well, you'll be good friends, but we're all married to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, all right? Verse 31, but as touching the resurrection of the dead, now remember he said, you don't know the scriptures. He's going to give them a little scripture lesson. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, Now, do you want to know where the dead are? If you listen to one of these yo-yos that say they're out here in the ground, then you're listening to a yo-yo that's no better than these Sadducees that don't believe in the resurrection. All right? Because God himself spoke these words. What were they? Verse 32. I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. In other words, he spoke these words, and you might make a note of it if, if, you, um, if you like. It was in Exodus chapter 3, verse 6, and read on through verse 16. Long time ago, God made that statement. But you see, they are with him. What about the parable in Luke 16 where Jesus would say, Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham. In other words, Abraham was embracing him. They were shaking hands. Abraham out here in the hole in the ground or was Lazarus? No. To be absent from this body instantly is to be present with the Lord. To serve God is to serve a living God and the God of the living. Not even Satan has died yet, and, but he has already been sentenced to death. But they are all there with him. Yes, a gulf, as, as explained in the parable in Luke 16, is between them. Those that, um, the haves and the have-nots, I'll call them for the sake of saying. But Christ's answer to them was, no, you just don't know what you're talking about because even though she was married to all seven of them on earth, and seven is spiritual completeness, quite frankly, whether that was by accident on the Sadducees' part or uh, God placed it in their mind that the spiritual completeness is the thing that we are all one many-membered body and that we have, spiritually speaking, now one husband and that is the Lord himself. All right? It's that simple. Now, uh, I have had this d d really disturb married couples that were uh, really in love, all right? Uh, what, whatever that, well, I know what that means, but that they just really wanted to be together there. Well, you will be, because, because you will know each other, but certainly the attraction, some oftentimes in the flesh, and, and that's not really a fair statement, because real love has very little to do with the flesh, though the flesh is very much a part of it. Uh, but it, it is more and it is better. All right, I'll just leave it at that. Verse 33, I mean, that just fixed their wagon, all right? Because, you see, God himself spoke those words. God himself said, I'm not the God of the dead. In other words, Jesus put those Sadducees in a deep pocket. Jesus put those Sadducees behind the eight ball. Now, the Pharisees should have been very pleased with this and not have piled on, but let's, let's continue on and see. And when the multitude heard this, 
they were astonished at his doctrine. Better translated, they were astonished at his teaching. Hey, that's right. Says it right there in Exodus chapter 3, verse 6. Just is written there. God, that's God's words, and we know the scripture. And now we're not going to make that mistake again of thinking there's no resurrection at death, all right? Of the flesh, that is to say. Verse 34. And here comes the piling on now of the Pharisees. They did believe in life after death, okay? But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they, they were gathered together. Like I say, this was in their favor, I'm surprised, but listen, 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, oh my word, here, I mean, we've got Slick right from downtown, all right? And old Slick asked him a question, tempting him and saying, now, this was cool hand Luke here, see? Verse 36, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Question. And it's a good question. Which out of all the commandments is the great one? Well, any child should know uh, that number one is number one, but be that as it may, look at the wisdom. 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love uh, the Lord thy God with all thy heart. We got one, two, and with all, with, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. There's five of them. That's five, there were, let's say, of the ten. The first five are spiritual. And he would continue then, this is the first and great commandment. It's spiritual. And it covers all spiritual law. As long as you keep God first, Antichrist is not going to deceive you. The spurious Messiah can have no uh, uh, truck with you. Why? Because with all your heart, you're loving him. You have no room to love uh, or be deceived uh, because you would also love his word and you would study his word. Verse 39, and the second is like unto it. It's kind of just like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now this is civil. See? That covers all five of the civil uh, commandments. Verse 40, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I mean, it's all inclusive. And it does. Because both spiritual and, um, and civil are handled within this. I can hardly help making an extra point that comes to mind in passing here is the fact that if you focus, you know how I'm always after you and on your case about staying focused or disciplined in the Word of God. That's extremely important. This is the ultimate in focus and discipline. In other words, this very wise saying, one covering all of the spiritual law and the other covering all of the uh, civil law, and if you focus on those, you won't break any of God's law. Is that possible that man could not break law? Well, not. we don't have too good a track record for that, my friends. There was only one perfect among us. But yet at the same time, I cannot help but pass that as it came to mind. What, what the ultimate words given to this sea lawyer Scripture lawyer. Uh, I just love scripture lawyers. I just love to tie them up in knots. You know, they, they think they are um, so fantastic, you know. And yet, they leave, unfortunately, many times there will be a higher critic. So the spirituals, they're not all that high on the spiritual and they're easy to tie up. But anyway, uh, Christ does a fantastic job with the little lawyer. Verse 41. Now here comes another sect. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, oh, ho, ho, we have Christ himself asking now, saying, 42, saying, what think ye of Christ? 
That is to say, let, uh, Christ to us, we know who he is, but he was asking the question, Christ means the anointed one or Messiah. All right. What think ye of Messiah? Let me say it that way. Whose son is he? They say unto him, oh, the son of David. Well, naturally, I mean, it was taught that he would come through the lineage of David from... Um, from back to the time that uh, Christ, uh, uh, that Almighty God made the statement that from the root of Jesse would come a sprout and that sprout through David would be Messiah, all right? They had that right. But listen carefully, watch the wisdom now, 43. He saith unto them, how then, tell me this, how then doth David in spirit that's important. In spirit, call him Lord, saying. You know, David himself said this. I want you to realize that from his soul. 44. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. 45. Listen. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? Question. Verse 46. And no man was able to answer him a word. Neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. He just, the living, walking word of God was just too much for them. But beloved, you would also err were you to not understand what Christ is talking about here concerning David. Because Christ forces the power of God upon the issue of the promises not only, but that he would be Melchizedek, which is to say the king of the just, the doc, and that he would be the child of God, as well as, through the woman, child of David. All right? Uh, you know where it's written? You should. It's Psalms 110. I want to go there, and we're going we're to cover just a little bit of it. It's important. It really is that when Christ quotes a scripture, that you go back and absorb it, for there's a great deal more taught there than is said in the New Testament. Psalms 110, verse 1, and it reads, this is, it's important that you know this is a psalm of, by, and with David. This is David himself speaking. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. That was what Christ quoted too, but listen carefully. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. This is as Messiah, of course. In other words, Christ in a way was mocking him because there he was, Messiah, standing right in their face. Verse 3. The people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Hinging back again to the power of God, to thy power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, born of woman. Thou hast the dew of thy youth, a virgin shall conceive. Verse 4, the Lord hath sworn and will not repent. God is not going to change his mind. Yahweh, when you see all uppercase L-O-R-D, that's Yahweh, most usually from the manuscripts, the sacred name. Thou, he's not going to repent from this. Nobody can change it. What? This, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Don't ever let anyone pull your leg. This means, let's just say Prince of Peace, all right, to simplify it. There's only one Prince of Peace. Man can try to bring peace. Man can cry peace, peace, peace. There's only one Prince of Peace, and he shall bring that peace. Continuing. 
The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. It's coming. It's approaching. Six. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. Do you know what these dead bodies are? Have you ever read Re uh, Revelation chapter 11? 7,000 shall die at his return. It's the fallen angels. All right? And Satan is bound. He shall wound the heads over many countries. Talk about a deadly wound. Verse 7 to complete. He shall drink of the brook in the way. He is the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. He shall lift up the head of the kingdom of Almighty God and establish the millennium kingdom, the eternal kingdom. How beautiful. It's no wonder that they were afraid to ask him anymore because they were familiar with the scripture. It's just that they left much of the spiritual um, uh, assertion off of it that they could not see the depth that God himself, when he would say, let us make man in, pay attention, our image, meaning God is included in the lot. And this was the image of God. He was created in the image of God. And if you want to know the, the really in-depth truth, this is, this is the sense of being born again, born of the water, the water of the womb. And within that, finding eternal life by being hindered even by the flesh, the things that flesh will try to, to talk you into. Uh, the maybe it would be better said the weakness of flesh regardless of that being a can-do overcomer in the flesh body that's what God is looking for people that can defeat Satan people so strong so filled with the Spirit the Holy Spirit and the Scripture that even in the flesh body would be so strong that they would have power over Satan, that's just to say to order him around, which you have if you practice that power and authority that God has given you. You might say, well, where is that written? It's in Luke 10, verse 18. Satan runs from you if you practice the power, if you focus, if you discipline yourself on the Word of God, the living Word, and the living Word just put all of them to silence. The lawyers, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the government officials, they could not hold him a light to see by the wisdom of our Father. Okay, enough said. Chapter 23 and verse 1, let's go with it, and it reads... Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples. Always pay attention to who he's discussing and addressing. This is both for disciples and the multitude. It's for anyone to know that has eyes to see. Verse 2, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Well, what could that mean? Well, he just got through quoting Moses. He did. That is to say, um, the scripture concerning the marriage. That, what was Moses' seat then? He was the lawgiver. It was Moses that God gave the commandments that the, um, that the uh, Pharisees tried to trip him up on. Or no, that was the lawyer. Tried to trip him up on, on the uh, greatest commandment. So if someone sits in the seat of Moses, what seat are they sitting in? The givers and takers of the law, the foundation of those that form church tradition. So what he's saying is you better be careful because look who's sitting 
in the high seat here of lawgiver, meaning without it being said, it's a good way to get tripped up. Good way to really get messed up is to listen to them. Verse 3, all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. They know the word pretty good. Observe the word. That observe and do. They claim to teach the law, teach the word. Not bad. Got some pretty good scholars. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. You know, church system, they seem to pretty well hold to the word, but they never seem to get around to doing it. Why? Well, if you don't take in the whole pattern, the whole picture, to know that men's tradition should be swept out the door. There should be no room in God's house for traditions of men. Because quite frankly, Christ has just proved to you how little men know compared to the living word, this word. And how often is this word taught in churches today other than here a little, there a little, take a little? Never in context, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. I, I won't say never because there's some good churches around the world because there are good men and women of God in this world. They may be spread pretty thin, and, uh, but uh, they're there. But there are many false teachers. Not deliberately, they are simply ignorant of God's word. There are many degrees running around that are biblically illiterate as far as understanding the deeper truths of God's word. They teach one thing, salvation, baptism, flyaway, period. Don't pay any attention to the rest of God's word. It'll just confuse you, they will say. When you hear a man say that, then you had better tighten everything down and hang on for a wicked rough ride because Christ, when he returns, will drive those away from him that have not taught his word, all of it. For, quite frankly, as he will warn in the chapter following this 23rd chapter, don't you dare miss it, the chronological order of events, and he tells you very plainly that a child can understand that the spurious Messiah returns before he comes to gather anyone to him. And if you're not careful because of this seat of Moses, you're going to be fooled and you're going to worship the spurious Messiah. That's what he's warning about. You know, the Word of God is so complete, it's so beautiful, that it's so exciting when you understand the action, the fulfillment, the protection, and the blessings that come from that Word, the food that takes your starving spirit soul and fills it and gives it something to really bite into. That you can be somebody, a child of God, with knowledge, with wisdom, with understanding. For all wisdom comes from God. And as exactly as it was in as much as time means nothing to him, as he would say, let us make man in our image. Well, there you are, friend. You're it. You're one of them. And you're in the image of that soul. This is your time. Choose God's word and listen to your father, even as, as David would say in that psalm. Listen to him and test all men, this one or any other one, out according to how they handle the Word of God. Gifted teachers, gifted preachers, gifted evangelists, they're different fields. But you know when you've heard the gift, because it will be God's Word that will be brought forth. Not, well, let's see, uh, not God's Word, but let's call it 
Um, I, I hesitate to use a name, but I have to to complete my analogy. Uh, like it's uh, uh, Joe Blow's Church of Salvation. Well, who's Joe Blow? I know Jesus Christ, but I don't know Joe Blow. I didn't know Joe Blow could save anyone. All right? So be careful when men set themselves up and take a seat above the word of God because they're certainly going to be lowered. Let God's word be supreme and give God the glory. Check all men out. All right, bless your hearts. Listen a moment, won't you please?